We're going to be talking about how to automate amortization of prepaid items in Dynamics GP 1101. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to start out with some introductions and, uh, and then let people kind of come into the meeting as we, as we talk here. So go ahead and get started. Janelle, if you wouldn't mind switching the slide. All right, so we are Savantis Technologies, Inc. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background about, uh, about ourselves, we are the fiscal year 15 Microsoft Dynamics SMB ERP US Cloud Partner of the Year. Kind of a mouthful, but uh, that was, we were recognized as that Partner of the Year um, in fiscal year 2015. Uh, we were established in 2000, so we've been around for a while now. We specialize in deploying, managing, and supporting Dynamics GP in the Microsoft Azure Cloud. So uh, while we do uh, Dynamics GP support for uh, on-premise or, or on-premise applications as well, um, we primarily focus on cloud implementations of Microsoft Dynamics GP. Okay, cool. Today we're going to have Janelle Riley as our uh, as our speaker. She's our CEO here at Savantis. She's got a BA in mathematics from the University of Texas at Austin, as well as a master's in professional accounting from that same from that same university. Uh, she's been a CPA for 28 years and has worked with Dynamics GP for 16 of those years. Prior to working at Savantis, she worked for Ernst and Young and KPMG in Minneapolis and Washington D.C. Um, and she has consulting experience in a wide variety of tax transactions, including banking and insurance, products and services, mergers and acquisitions, organizational structure, and more. Uh, so she's got quite a bit of background, so we're going to have her go ahead and talk through today. Uh, moderating today on chat is going to be Mary Metzler. She's a senior technical consultant here at Savantis. She's got three majors from, the, from Concordia College, including communications, business, and Spanish, and she's worked with Dynamics GP for five years now. Uh, for those of you who haven't used Skype before, just real quick, we're going to, if you have any questions throughout the course of the webinar, you can feel free to chat with us and ask those questions. Mary will go ahead and answer those via chat, uh, and then Janelle may address them at the end. We're going to spend about 30 minutes talking through the process of, of uh, prepaid expenses and uh, for about 30 minutes, and then right at the end there, Janelle will uh, stick around as long as she needs to in order to answer questions that you have. To open the chat pane, at the bottom left-hand corner of the Skype meeting, there's a little chat bubble. If you click on that, it will open the chat pane up and you'll be able to, and you'll be able to talk to us. I'll go ahead and send a message right now. And you should get a little notification that there is, that I've said hello. So it's, yep, right there. So you can toggle it there. All right, so Janelle, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you at this point and we'll get started. Perfect, okay, and like Jenna said, we're gonna spend about 30 minutes talking about prepaid expenses and how to automate those in Dynamics GP. After that time, I will stay on the line for a period of time, and so will Mary and a couple of other team here. If you have more detailed questions, we'd be happy to help you with them. And actually, we do a number of these webinars, and at the end, if you even have unrelated GP questions, we're usually willing to give a little bit of our time to just answer those as well if you just have something that's been nagging you. Um, we might be able to assist you right on the spot. So what we're going to talk about during this session is deferrals and prepaid expenses. So we're going to talk first about what are they, when should we use them, why would we automate them in Dynamics GP. Then from there, we're going to go and talk about the different ways that we can do deferral options that we can do in Dynamics GP. Uh, we're going to give you an overview of the process of deferrals in GP. I'll do a demo transaction in Dynamics GP. And then at the end, I'm just going to briefly address a few um, uh, other topics such as, you know, what reporting should you run at month end? Uh, what are deferral profiles and how could you use them? And how do you handle retroactive deferrals? So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is talk about what are deferrals. Technically, a deferred expense is a cost that's already been incurred but what has not yet been consumed. The cost is recorded as an asset on your balance sheet until such time as the underlying goods or services are consumed, and at that point, the cost is charged to expense. Now, that's the technical thing that we get in our accounting classes and the CPA exam and all that. 
um, but I'll go more into the practical considerations, which is more what most of us are very interested in when we work in accounting systems. Deferred expenses are usually classified as current assets because they're likely going to be consumed within one year. Now, one of the subsets of expense deferrals is actually prepaid expenses. Those are a subset of uh, deferral transactions. So that is what we're going to focus on for our, our sample today. Just be aware, you can do other types of deferral transactions in Dynamics GP as well, but we're focusing on prepaid expenses. We're also going to use a classic example, really simple one of how to defer in GP. We're going to assume that we have a prepaid purchase uh, of an umbrella insurance policy. We pay it today, June 23rd, and it's going to cover the next 12 months, which is usually how umbrella policies work. And so it's going to be amortized from July 1, 2016 to June 30th, 2017. So why do we use them? Partially because they tell us we have to. It's part of GAAP. Uh, our revenue recognition principles say that revenues have to be recognized in the period in which they incur. And our matching principle says that expenses should be recognized in the period in which they are incurred. So even though on a cash basis I'm paying for my an umbrella insurance today, June 23rd, my expense, I'm actually consuming this over the course of the next year from July 1, 2016 to June 30, 2017. So in order to properly match, that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, there is a materiality that you can apply. Uh, I, I have a kind of a funny story. We had a client once that actually amortized their toilet paper. So those of you that are experienced accountants are probably laughing right now. No, seriously, they had a prepaid toilet paper account. And every month then, someone would go count how many rolls of toilet paper were left, and then they would consume them. So I thought you all would appreciate that one. I think that one, I would say, yeah, I'm all about accuracy, but I think we're going a little too far in that case. Um, so why do we automate deferrals? Well, let's talk a little bit about automation general first. I uh, used to teach for a number of years and uh, a college course on accounting, a college uh, course for accounting systems for uh, upper division course. And the very first page of the fir very first chapter of the book always said this, if you're using very many spreadsheets, you either one, are not utilizing your accounting system, or two, need a new accounting system. So that's one thing that we always, as accountants, it's easy for us to get dive into the details because that's our thing, but we have to always keep in mind that everything we do has to provide business value, and doing a bunch of spreadsheets is not something that's really adding business value, particularly when we can automate a process and not have those at all. Uh, we, this is a, a, an industry trend right now. In fact, just this week, Robert Half, uh, released its due 2016 benchmarking study, which, believe it or not, 48% of U.S. companies now use software to perform automated month-end close. So now many of these are larger companies, but still, even if you're smaller, keep in mind with Dynamics GP, you do have the ability to, to automate much of your month-end close and make it a, a very straightforward process. And, of course, as part of that automation, prepaid expenses, amortization is one very simple thing you can do to automate one piece of your month-end close. So then there's also the theoretical piece of this, and this is kind of coming for me with my experience of doing this for almost 30 years, is as a business manager, your business managers want to be able to see the financials and get a gut check of where their numbers are at any point in time. Well, most organizations are really good at managing where are they with sales, cost of goods sold, gross margin. They know pretty much any day where they are on those. Most organizations do. What they don't always know is what is the bottom line going to be. But if you actually manage your bottom line expenses, your below, the, below margin expenses through a lot of amortization of items so such as prepaids, you are able to smooth your expenses enough that you can predict very reliably every month what those below the, below the lines expenses are so you actually know your bottom line net income at any point in time during the month. Keep going here. Okay, in GP, there are actually two deferral options. Um, and I want to mention the one from Binary Stream because it's important for people to know about that as well. So Dynamics GP does have built-in expense deferrals. And then on the other side, just so you know, they have built-in revenue recognition deferrals as well. I just want you to know um, that after GP 2013, any of you are that on G GP 2013 or later, this is actually free. So that's the real benefit. It's free, it's simple, it doesn't take you hardly any time to set up. You can defer GL transactions, AR transactions, sales orders, AP and PO transactions. So that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to focus on the AP transactions today, but the philosophy, the way it's set up, is all done 
the same across those modules. And heck, it's free, it's simple, it's going to save you time at the end of the month, why not? There is a second deferral option, which is Binary Stream. Binary Stream is a third-party add-on, uh, an ISV for GP. They have an excellent revenue and expense deferrals package, which allows you to be able to calculate deferred revenue and deferred expenses. Uh, it works great if you've got high-volume deferrals, complex amortization periods. Uh, it has extensive automation capabilities. So if you start going through the GP deferrals and you find that you're doing a lot of it and it's extensive, you may want to consider picking up Binary Streams Revenue Expense Deferrals because I think you'll be happy to do so. I'm not going into that today, I just want you to know that exists. So let's talk about the deferral process overview. We'll give an overview of how that process works. The first step, of course, is to set up the deferral. Deferral setup in Dynamics GP is in the financials module. Even if you're doing, I'm doing an AP deferral right now or an AR deferral, the setup is in financials, so you'll go to financial setup. Uh, if you are in Dynamics GP and you haven't used this feature before, you may not even have it turned on and you may have to go into the registration keys area and turn on that, that feature so that you can actually see it but it should be there for you. The second step is to set up your deferral prior profile, and that's an optional thing. So I'm just gonna mention that at the end briefly so you know it exists. And actually for prepaid expenses, not used very much anyway. For other areas used extensively. The next thing we're gonna do is create a sample deferral. And at the end, we're gonna run a deferral report that you would use at month end, a really simple one, to, uh, to, to tie out your general ledger to your deferral, deferred expense account. So let me go ahead and start to do a walkthrough of this. I'm going to go ahead uh, and pull up Dynamics GP. And I'm going to actually jump back. I was in another page. I'm going to jump back to the home page so that you can all see it. Um, what I am using here to do this demo, some of you may not even recognize it. Many of you will. At least our clients will because many of them use the web client. What I'm showing this on is the Dynamics GP web client which is basically a way to get to Dynamics GP by using a website. It's on GP2016 is the one that I'm using. GP2016 is built on HTML5. What that means is you can actually pull this up and use it on tablet, an iPad, whatever. I actually do use mine on a tablet and it works very well for me. You'll see if you're used to the traditional GP interfaces, it looks the same. It's just got a you know more modern type of background, um, and you can see my homepage looks very similar to what it looks like in the other op, you know the traditional client or what we call the classic client. I'm going to go ahead and look at my area pages. I'm going to go switch over to the purchasing module. This is how it works now, and you'll see on here too. Those of you that are, are custom to the classic client or the classic app, you'll see here these are very similar to what you're accustomed to seeing, transactions, cards, reports, inquiry routines, utilities, and setup. But what I'm going to use is something that maybe 50% of Dynamics GP users at this time is a feature called Navigation Lists. This has been available in Dynamics GP for a very long time, probably six, seven years. And what it does is allows you to have a more modern interface for, uh, for working within Dynamics GP. So I went to my active vendors here, and I'm going to go ahead and show you. This is my list of my active vendors and all their current balances. And on the navigation lists across the top, I can do transactions. So what I'm going to do is I've got a bill from Associated Insurance. So I'm going to go ahead and find them. Here's Associated Insurance. I'm going to mark the box here, and I'm going to create an invoice for Associated Insurance. So what you're seeing now is Payables Transaction Entry. Even those of you on the Classic app do recognize this because this is you know, the standard Payables Transaction Entry that we've had for a very long time with Dynamics GP. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Umbrella Insurance 2016, I'm going to say. Ah, I have a thing that I can't type when people are watching me. So you know, if I'm on a demo, that's what's going to happen. But I really am very fast normally. I'm going to jump ahead here to put in a document number, and from here, I'm going to pay $12,000 for an annual insurance that the document date here is June 23rd, but that I'm actually going to amortize this over the next year, starting July 1. Now, so far, everything I'm doing is exactly what you're accustomed to seeing, and I'm going to go look at my distributions now. My distributions, again, similar to what you're accustomed to seeing, even though it's on the web client, uh, I have this set up as a default. This happens to be an insurance account in administration in administration department, which is Department 100. And normally, I would expense $12,000, and I would hit AP as a credit for $12,000. 
but I don't want that expense today. Instead, I want to defer it. So once I have deferrals turned on, I can actually click on the row where the expense is, click additional, and click deferral. Please note here, there's something called deferral profile as a second option. I'm going to come back to that later, so I want you to remember that so that you, you can see how easy it is to get to those profiles when I mention it later. But I'm going to click deferral, and another window is going to pop up for me. And this is a window. I'm going to expand this out so it's easy for us all to see. Um, my start of my amortization period, there are only a few things that I need to fill out here. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a 7-1. And I'm going to make the end of the period to be June 30th, 2017. And I have a couple of other options. I've got $12,000 that I'm going to portion over that period. You'll notice right here, I have three different methods I can do to calculate those deferrals. The first is the days and period, equal per period, or miscellaneous. Equal per period is what I have set by default. What that means is $12,000, I've got 12 periods, it's going to amortize $1,000 a month. And you can see each month what's going to happen. I also could click miscellaneous period. That's if I, maybe I have a health insurance premium I'm paying today, but I want to defer just for one month and I just want it to hit in uh, on the 1st of July. You know, I can do miscellaneous. It'll just do it in one period and, and reverse it out and then put the expense back in July. What I'm going to do is actually select the third option because, you know, the accountant in me really, really likes details and I like to know my numbers, right? If I do by days and period, it's no more work for me, but look what I'm able to do. I've got in August and July, which are 31-day months, I actually am going to amortize it over 31, but I've actually got September, which is a 30-day uh, month is going to be 986, and if I go all the way down to February 2017, it's going to know that February, February 2017 is not a leap year, and it's going to do 920.55. Now, why do I do that? Because it's no more work for me, but what it does do for me is allows me, again, to predict my profitability in February, honestly, because I like numbers. I want to make sure things are right. February, I have fewer working days. I have much. I have less revenue typically than a 31-day month. So if I have a little bit less expenses, it makes my net income be a little bit more predictable. The other thing that I need to put in here, you'll notice it already knew what to do with the rest of my, my deferrals because it's filling it in automatically for my distributions. But what I am going to do is enter my deferral account, which in this case happens to be prepaid expenses, which is account 1400 and I'm going to hit save account. So what this is telling the system to do now is amortize this over 12 months by days and period, go ahead and run off of my health insurance account. In other words, take this on June 22nd, take that expense out of health insurance, put it into prepaid, and then each month take it out of prepaid and put it into health insurance. That's just exactly what I'm telling it to do. So I'm gonna click okay. Now, when I hit OK, I'm back to my payables transaction distribution, which is exactly, you know, what it was before. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go ahead and post this transaction. So um, I'm going to pop up here. I'm going to post it on the fly. And I'm going to show you a couple of posting journals that are popping up at the end of this so that you can see what's going to happen. Since I'm on the fly, i got to close the window. I am going to show you a transaction distribution. And I'm also going to show you my general posting journal. And here's what's going to pop up. You'll notice, first of all, I have my original transaction, which is popping up to show you, which is happening on June 23rd. It is a credit to accounts payable and a debit to health insurance. Okay. Then, that's just my normal AP transaction, but then after that, I have a second transaction or a number of additional transactions that also get posted in GP. I have a reversal on June 23rd of the health insurance expense. I'm taking it out of there because I just put it in and putting it into a prepaid expense account of $12,000. And then you're going to see every month from here on, on the first of the month, I am going to amortize that out of prepaid expense and into health insurance. And you'll see that I'm 1,019, 1,019, and as you know, I did this on a days and period, so it's not gonna be an even number. And that's gonna go all the way through to June 1st or June of 2017. So pretty clean, pretty simple. You saw, actually, somebody who's experienced with this, an AP person, can, can literally set up this transaction in maybe 30 seconds. So it is quite quick. 
What I'm going to show you next, now that I've accomplished that and my transactions are in, what I'm going to do next, uh, first of all, just to, for a little bit of cleanup, i got to make sure I've got this thing set up to series post. So I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup and confer and, uh, oops, I'm in the wrong spot here, and confirm that I went through series post. And yes, it did go. Good. Okay. Oh, there's payables. Take that back. Nope, there's my transaction. I'm going to post that through. Okay, so now I've got that through my GL. Now the next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of reporting on it. First of all, I'm going to show you what happened in, um, in the GL. Uh, I showed you the debits and the credits happening. I'm also going to show you in another way. I'm going to go ahead and go back to SmartList and pull up a quick SmartList to show you what happened in the deferred expense account. So you can see that actually hitting now that I've posted it through. And I'm going to go to account transactions. And I believe I saved one already for prepaid expenses. And I actually just restricted it to this journal entry so that you could actually see it. Here's what you're seeing right now. This is my deferred expenses account, 1400 I had that original debit where I put it into the prepaid. And you can see each month coming out. And at the end, the balance is going to be zero. Now the next thing, the last thing I'm going to show you in terms of reporting is I'd like to show you a report that's handy to use uh, for month end because ideally when you do automation, what you want to do is not do a bunch of spreadsheets at month end but just print out a report and say, this ties to my GL, I'm ready to rock and roll, I've got it done. So there is a report, it is in financial module. Uh, I think I mentioned early in here that even though I may be in purchasing right now, the setup management and reporting for deferred expenses or deferrals is actually in the financial modules, so just be aware of that. Um, there are two ways I can get to that. I could navigate it into my report list, and actually you'll see I have some deferral reports saved. But for those of you who are more used to the traditional reporting, I'm just going to scroll down in the reports area and find deferral. And I'm going to do a detailed report for my insurance. I'm going to do it for my, yeah, I'm going to do it for my insurance. And I'll show you my report options for that. I actually would like to look at everything. I actually set this up in advance. I'm setting it, I'm running month end for July 2016. So let's say I just ran this thing, I just posted through, I had my expense go through and get switched over to deferrals in June 30th. Now I'm July 31st, I'm closing July. I wanna make sure that I know what the balance in that account should be. And we already know it should be my $12,000 minus the thousand whatever it was that I amortized in July. So I'm gonna restrict this to my last posting date of 731 and the expense account that I'm deferring. And I better check and see where I'm sending that. I'm gonna send that to a standard report. And I'm going to go ahead and print that to my screen. And now you can see. You're going to see a number of additional transactions, not just the one I did, because I've been doing a little playing around in the system, prepping for the demo. But what you will see, these are yesterday. I did a number of them. But you can see the June 23rd transaction. It hit account 15160. It was for $12,000. There has been 1,000. I can look at right here below here. The totals are, it was $12,000. I have amortized $1,019.18, which means my rebalance, remaining balance in the account is $10,980.82, which should be exactly what's my GL. And actually, since I've done another a number of other deferrals, you can see them happening as well. Like here's one that happened in May. I got deferred 1000 a month. And so I can actually look at the very bottom of this report. In total, this should tie exactly to what's in my GL, $32,180.82. So that gives you an overview of how all this is going to work. Oh, by the way, I should mention, this is just default report in GP, so this is what you would get if you just ran it. I do recommend considering um, doing some modifications to the report. You know, it's not very pretty or readable, but you know what? The numbers are right, and I guess that's the important part. So I'm doing pretty well here. I've got about five minutes remaining. I just want to hit a couple of miscellaneous um, topics for you. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about setup. So I'm going to jump back. I'm in financial module again, and I'm in setup. And I'm going to scroll down, and you're going to see the deferral setup down here. And you see there are two options for me. There's deferral. This is the default setup. It really sets the default for the system. When I go and actually enter the deferral itself, I can still overwrite and change these things. But it is uh, nice to have this as a default. So my default calculation, for example, I have set as equal per period. Maybe I would put that as days and period if I prefer to do that. 
Um, do I want it automatically go through GL? Yeah, actually I do because it's like 12 months worth and I don't want to hit post, 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 post. Um, I do want to post into closed future period GLs. And keep in mind, this does no harm in GPB. A lot of people get nervous about that. You notice I just posted it into 2017. But those periods are all closed in GP. No one else can do it, just me on a deferral. And what it does is goes ahead and runs it all through the GL and gets it done properly for me right up front. And now I don't have to touch it again. It's just going to automatically amortize. I do select the option, though. I don't really want it to go into past periods that are closed because really I've already got solid financials. I don't want to do that. So if you have additional questions on that, you're welcome to call in and, and we'll assist you with some of those things. But those are the default setups. The next thing I'm going to briefly mention is deferral profiles. You notice that when I did my setup, and I or when I went in, I went in and did the payables transaction, and then I hit the button that uh, in, on the distribution, and I hit the button above that said deferrals. There was a second option called deferral profile. I hit deferrals, and then I entered in my distributions that I wanted it to be, my deferral period I wanted it to be, and my calculation method. If I were to do piles of umbrella insurance deals, I actually could set up a profile that remembers all of it for me. It knows it's in payables. It's knows it's saving purchasing. It knows I'm going to do equal per period. It knows what my distributions are going to be. And I can actually manage user security of who has access to this. What that does then is allows me when I'm doing that transaction, instead of hitting deferral, I can hit deferral profile and it'll just auto fill everything for me so I don't have to fill it every time. We typically don't see that with prepaid expenses because, you know, they're kind of one-offs. You have an umbrella insurance. You have a health insurance. You have a, an e and insurance. You have a liability insurance. You have, you know, multiple other things that you're doing as prepaids, and they each have a distribution they're hitting on the financial anyway, so you may as well just type it in as you go. The last and final thing I just want to show you, which is really handy in the real world, Okay, so my AP clerk just went and entered this transaction in for me and this AP transaction. And I'm a month end and I see $12,000. They entered as a regular AP transaction. And I'm seeing $12,000 hit my insurance account, my health insurance account. I'm like, ah, crap. That was an umbrella insurance policy. It should have been amortized over 12 months. I really want to amortize that. I can actually go back after that transaction has been fully posted and complete and actually go in and retroactively defer it, which comes in super handy. Another place where it would be handy is maybe I have a very large account, an AP department. Maybe I have four, five, six people that all they do is AP. I don't want them to have to figure out these deferral per periods because, you know, that's not their thing. But what I can do is keep track of that at month end, and I can go at month end and take every transaction that came in at month end and do a retroactive deferral. Oh, I just did it. You can actually do it in sales also. I'm going to click purchasing. And what it allows you to do, if I take my associated insurance, it allows me to go in, pick them up. I'm going to grab a random transaction that's not deferred. Uh, let's see, I am going to set up a batch for it, and then I'm going to grab transaction one. Let's do that. And I'm going to go ahead and drill into it. And from here, I can click my distribution, go to additional, and there I am, deferral and deferral profile. Right now, I can go ahead and do the deferral. I can go ahead and apply it, and it actually will fix it all and recalculate it and post it all for me. So pretty, pretty handy to have. Uh, even organizations such as us that do this for a living, we still miss them occasionally, and it's really nice to be able to go back and do that deferral retroactively. Keep in mind, all of this is also available in other modules. GL, like I said, has deferral capabilities. AR has capabilities. AP, sales order processing does. You can, you can actually take sales order processing transactions or invoicing transactions and defer those. Um, and then you can also do deferrals on purchase order transactions. So with that, I'm exactly at 30 minutes, and um, I'm going to stop now. For those of you who want to pile off, you're welcome to do so. Others of you who may have questions to ask, I'd be happy to ask any deferral-related questions, or my team would, and also be happy to answer if you just have a random question, you just need some, it's bothering you, need somebody to answer it. So, yeah. And on that note, this is, this is Jenna again. Uh, for those of you that did sign, or that did join us today, uh, if you have any questions, after this, you know, you're kind of thinking about something later on or you want some additional information or training on any of this, uh, you should have gotten an email from me this morning uh, about this webinar. You can feel free to email me directly. Um, 
and uh, I'll go ahead and put you in contact with one of our GP consultants here to get you some additional answers and training and whatnot. So uh, if you have any questions at this point, you can use that chat pane on the left side and we'll be happy to answer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jenna, as a, as a housekeeping measure, are you sending, are you posting this video and then um, and, you know, sending um, uh, copies of the slides to people? Yep. So everybody that attended today uh, will be getting a, uh, a link for the recording as well as additional, as well as slides and some additional training materials. Um, and we'll, we'll get that over to you shortly. Yeah, we actually, um, you, we're actually going to give you some of our training materials that we use with our clients um, because you attended, because there are a number of non-clients who are attending this session, but because you attended the session, we're giving you those. Um, when we do our trainings, we do provide click-by-click -click instructions to our clients because, you know, you can sit and listen to all this, but then when you try to do it yourself, you won't necessarily remember everything. So that gives you an opportunity to follow those instructions. So I believe that uh, Amy Gangle here made three documents, one, how to set up deferrals, uh, and deferral profiles, one how to uh, run deferrals, and a third on how to do reporting on deferrals. So um, you'll That's probably right. find those helpful. Yep. And Janelle, we've got a question for Carol. Yeah. Asks, how would you handle a period that starts 7-15-16 through 7-14-17? Okay, I've got Mary on the line so she can help me with it, but I believe we can just put a different date in there. Am I correct, Mary? Is she making a note? I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to um, purchasing here quick. Yep, that's what I thought. So when we went in and did that purchase order or purchasing transaction, I'm going to jump back in here to um, that transaction. When we did this transaction, you'll notice that I'm just going to put associate in here again. When we pulled up the deferral screen, there was an option to select dates, and I just selected the first to the to the thirtieth. I'm going to put a number in there, and I'm going to go to my distributions, and you'll notice my distributions are what they were. But if I click on that deferral and go back to that additional deferral, I had, could put any start in any end of this period. In fact, like I mentioned, this is actually a health insurance account I happen to randomly, randomly have picked. I can do some interesting things. I could just defer it to July 1st if I wanted to. Or I could defer it over six months. Let's say I wanted to do um, July 14th to a 1 6 to September, let's say I just want to do a two month deferral, September 13 to a 1 6. I can actually do that equal per period. It knows I'm doing three months, $33 a month. So it'll go ahead and do that, or I can switch it over and do a miscellaneous and say, you know what, it's not really what I want to do. I really just want to do um, a specific amount that I'm going to hit. So I'm going to switch back or equal per period. Okay. Any other questions? Looks like we're doing pretty well. Actually, you know, for those of you who are clients, you're welcome to email in and ask any questions you want. As usual, uh, those that aren't our clients, uh, you can contact uh, Jenna.Riley at savannas.com um, or um, that she has uh, sent emails from, and uh, she will get you in touch with one of our people. In this type of thing, we pretty much can just answer any questions you have off the top of our head um, because it's pretty straightforward and we do quite a bit of it. So with that, Jenna, are we ready to close? Yeah, I think that if we don't have any other questions uh, that are coming out in right now, we'll go ahead and close out today. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining. And have a great Beautiful. rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. -bye.